Hello and welcome to the next video of my Worlds 2022 preview series where I cover all 24 teams leading up to Worlds as well as a few other videos along the way. Um, today obviously is Dom Juan Kia. They just got into Worlds this morning. Spoiler alert for the roundup later. Dom Juan did get past Sandbox today. So they're the three seed. Um, if you notice anything different with this video, audio wise, video wise, um, if my mouth is not matching my words, um, OBS just did an update and actually the interface looks a lot different now than it did before um so i don't know it might change my settings or not i, I mean it, it is entirely possible right but i'm trying to slam this video out and uh if you're not new to the channel you know my videos tend to be scuffed if you're new my videos tend to be scuffed um if you are new down in the uh, description you're going to find three links discord you can join that if you want to we talk about the games as they go on we bs um the, today we had quite a number of people in there bsing about the games as they went on so if you want to do that you can go ahead there's also a predictions channel where we predict the winners and i keep track just for bragging rights um and there might be other things planned for worlds on there it just remains to be seen um, whether that comes to fruition or not um, i'm hoping to be able to do it um some fun little extra things in addition to the predictions um also down in the description you're going to see a link to my twitter please follow me there i'm trying to expand the social media you know try and push my social media a little bit um to help my um channel grow so that's a thing third link is for youtube memberships i do extra content where i do my predictions for the winners of the games if you notice during my roundup videos i only go over the games i don't give you my prediction my prediction is extra content um for people if you want to know my prediction just to know um it's going to be ten dollars a month but if you use it for esports gambling betting legally um things of that nature it might be of use to you in that regard unless you want to support me for 10 bucks and you like my content that much there's also a tier of membership for three dollars where you get a badge and emoji i guess badges right now and uh, it shows up in the comments so you kind of you know you're supporting me and trying to make this sustainable um a couple people already did sign up so i really do appreciate those people for signing up and they got a chance to see my predictions for the games that came today and uh, so far we're 2-0 and going into the final one um and uh yeah so there'll be that and fantasy football content if you're an nfl football fan but you're here for dk um so Dom Kia, third seed from the lck coach is danny or danny uh, i don't i don't know uh he is 14 and 3 as a coach, taking them to their world's appearance in 2020 when they won. He would then go to T1 and struggle last year um, at times. And um, yeah, so that was his only international experience. Um, fit winning worlds in 2020 with this team and then leaving and now coming back. Um, the last three years, the LCK three seed, not Don Monkey necessarily, but the three seed specifically for Korea. In 2019, finished between 5th and 8th, so they're out in quarters. Um, Worlds 2020, they're out in quarters again. And Worlds 2021, the third seed was out in semis as three of the final four teams were LCK teams. So that's how that went. Now, how do I feel about this team as we head into um, Worlds? Well, <laughs> I'm not too happy about what they did today. Um, so Nugri is in top lane, and Nugri did not play all the games today. They played Birdall for a game. Um, there is a mess with this team going into um, Worlds. Hopefully, this is the five they just stick with. The team clearly is a lot better this way. Um, I don't want to get all my rant out now because it'll be in the roundup later. But Nugri, um, between playoffs and regional qualifiers, a 4.5 KDA. Uh, my KDA is different than other people's assist count as half. 8.81 uh, CS per minute, very high, 61.8 KP. 21.6 damage share 450 damage per minute which is a lot higher than we've been seeing um ahead in lane at 15 minutes more often than not did not get a solo kill and played three champions in the four games he played he's only played four games bird all played the other 10 um which is extremely concerning new Greece should be playing um he's world class he can play anything it's just i know he has struggled for sure with dom one but he's way better than bird all 2019 world he finished fifth and eighth with dom one he would then win in 2020 with them 2021 last year he took the money went to the fp went to the lpl playing for fpx and did not get out of group stage 
finishing 14th through 16th with Fun Plus Phoenix. Um, as a uh, international combatant, he's 29 and 13, a 2.04 KDA, 841 CS per minute, 59 KP. So 8.41 CS per minute, he definitely gets the better side of his matchups in top lane. 8.4 is very good for top lane, especially at the elite level of Worlds and MSI. 2 KDA needs to be improved on for sure. He dies quite a bit. Um, last time in 2021, he was pretty sus. If not, I mean, that was that's describing it nicely that he was sus. In the jungle, Canyon and Elite Jungle are definitely in my top five going into this season. Um, lackluster season, definitely. Um, this split did not go well for him, but um, yeah. 2.43 KDA, 4.67 CS per minute. A very, very low CS per minute in the playoffs. 64, 2 KP, 10.9 uh, damage share, 240 damage per minute. Mixed at 15 minutes, so he was ahead in like gold and XP, but behind in farm or vice versa. No solo kills, played seven champions in 14 games. Um, definitely a lot of champions he can play. That's without a doubt, um, but 4.67 CS per minute, that has to be picked up. Like I said, this split has not been Canyon's friend. He's just taken a back seat now to the rest of the team and is trying to carry. But, I mean, not trying to carry, sorry, trying to facilitate. But um, these numbers have to improve before the team becomes really, well, it is one-dimensional if he doesn't, like, start offering more in the jungle. And uh, that's going to not bode well for them at Worlds. I mean, not only that, his KP isn't extremely high. Um, I won't lie, I believe the KP might be a little off. I did screw up, I think, um, but I don't think I screwed up for Showmaker, so it's hard to imagine that Canyons is screwed up, um, but it's possible. Um, World's experience, Nuger, he was with Nugri um, in 2019, uh, fifth through eighth out in quarters. 2020, they would win. Um, last year at MSI, they would finish second, and then at Worlds, down one would finish second, so... Um, coming off of actually the last three appearances, first, second, and second. So, Damwon performs well internationally. Um, 59 and 21 internationally. So, that's a very, I think that's a 73% uh, um, win rate internationally. 357 KDA, which is very good. 6 CS per minute, 67.2 KP. So, you're going to say, well, he has 6 CS per minute internationally. That's good. That was the meta. The meta over the last couple of years has definitely been more uh, carry options in the jungle, um, and now it is not. It is not the case. It is more facilitator. You got Poppy, Trundle, um, things of that nature. Obviously, Poppy just got nerfed, and Trundle's getting nerfed, but we know what we're talking about here. There's not really many carry options in the jungle right now, um, and Canyon is one-dimensional. It's starting to show that Canyon's a, a little one-dimensional in, I mean... Hopefully you can pick it up for um, Worlds. Showmaker and Mid, another player that's starting to kind of show that maybe he's a little one-dimensional. Both players really struggled in summer. And there was, I mean, at points, I definitely didn't think this team would get out. I thought KT and Sandbox would beat them. But lo and behold, they're here. 2.83 KDA, KDA, 8.59 CS per minute. 8.59 CS per minute is good. It's solid. It's above 8.5, which is like what I consider average for mid lane. And at the highest level, the LCK playoffs, 8.59 is very good. Um, however, this meta really, he is more of a, I, I just, I feel like he fit metas in years past, not necessarily this one. And maybe if the meta kind of shifts to more global, that'll help him um, going into um worlds as well as the zoe buff will help him um 72 kp 27 percent damage share which is very high um 600 damage per minute mixed um at 15 minutes i think he was behind in farm but ahead in gold and xp riddle me that um two solo kills he had one today on silas specifically that sticks out to me played eight champions in 14 games played a lot of different things um, that is one thing Showmaker offers, is he can play a little bit of everything. Um, however, uh, you almost might want to tone that, like you showed it. So I guess he showed it, and now after you show it, you should probably tone it down. So when you go to an um, international event, you can focus on getting your foundational champions down that you feel like you can just throw out there and be very, very elite at. Um, instead of playing a bunch of stuff at like a A level, you need to find what you can play at the S level. Um, internationally 
Same thing as Canyon, 2019 Worlds Quarters, uh, 2020 Worlds was a winner, 2021 20, 21 MSI, and 2021 Worlds runner-up finishes. 59 and 21, 464 KDA, which is very good, 858 CS per minute, 65.5 KP, 858 CS per minute is very good. Um, is it Chovy? No, it's not Chovy, but Showmaker... Going into this season, I also had his top five player. I, I think he is extremely good. Um, and maybe Summer has not quite been his best friend, but I think that there is some growth here that can be made between now and Worlds. And this team is coming in hot. It really took care of Sandbox today, which I'll get to in my roundup later. So stay tuned for that. Um, but, I mean, this team is a threat. It is. After playing today, I think it's a threat. Um, you know, uh... It's tough it's tough actually really to think about worlds right now and the way the teams are looking after the way the lpl went today which will also be in my roundup bot lane this is where things are questionable for dom one so duck dom 432 kda over 10 cs per minute at 10.24 in playoffs and regional qualifiers 76 kp uh 28.7 damage share to lead the way with 633 damage per minute um Excuse me, behind him farm, but ahead in gold and XP at 15 minutes on average. Um, no solo kills. Played seven champions in 14 games, including a Yasuo and a Heimerdinger. Now, Duck Dom's Heimerdinger does stick out to me. That was a thing I knew about, and he doubled down on it in playoffs. Heimer was buffed during this uh, split. It might be something that we see at Worlds. Honest to God. I mean, I wouldn't be shocked if we see Duck Dom pull it up. He has not been bad at the champion when he does pull it out. So that that's a thing. That is a like something as small as that. Just getting one win that maybe they shouldn't get, maybe against whoever they're in um, you know, a group with and from the LPL. I mean that's that's feasible. That is extremely feasible. Um zero experience in the um international scene. He did spend some time in Latin America, I found out when I looked at the thing. He, he played a split in Latin America, I guess, but he has never had a uh, international uh, tournament. I mean, Worlds or MSI. Some people, like, when I went over Isaris's thing, we started talking, I mean, Rift Rivals and things like that, like, that's not, I'm not counting that stuff. Um, we're counting the big boy tournaments where everybody is there. Um, obviously, the VCS hasn't been there the last couple of years, but you know what I'm talking about. Support, Kellen, another, you know, we... We, it remains to be seen. I don't know how world class this is. Um, so 355 KDA, 833 KP. Very solid playoff performances out of Kellen, honestly. A lot better than I would have expected. He clears two wards every five minutes and places roughly two wards every five minutes. Um, played six champions in 14 games. Has no international experience. This bot lane, like the Heimerdinger, the Yasuo Senna, if they have these things in their repertoire, I think that they could be at a level like Flacket and Targamus. And um, honestly, those are the, when you think of those champions in, in getting weird in bot lane, that's kind of how I view this bot lane. Um, you know, this is almost a better version of G2 in that way. They don't play the same, but just when you look at the nameplates and you think of the, the, the options we have in the skill level, Nugri and Broken Blade, two solid um, top laners, Nugri is probably better than Broken Blade, but he has not played like it, right? We've seen him play better in the playoffs now ever since he's been fighting for a spot, but in in summer, not so much better than Broken Blade, right? Canyon and Showmaker, Yankos and Caps, very similar. I think Canyon is better than Sh Yankos, and um, Showmaker and Caps are pretty close, right? But um, the way Yankos has been playing and the way Canyon has been playing, this meta has fit Yankos more, right? So I still think that you know, these teams are pretty close in, in what they're going to offer. Um, going into Worlds, just that this team has a higher ceiling just because they have, um, you know, better players in multiple roles. Um, you know, when it comes to top lane and in um, bot lane, I mean, Duck Dom and Kellen are probably better than Flacken and Targamus. Um, well, Duck Dom's probably better than Flacken. It's close. I mean, I'm all over the place. I really do think that this team and G2 are really similar. And if you watch my power rankings yesterday, I mean, 6th through 12th are all in the same tier. And it's kind of just like, these teams could finish any which way. You can make a case for it. Um, you really could. Even G2, you can make a case for them being 6th, in my opinion. 
Um, with no experience in the spot lane, it's going to be a red flag going into Worlds. But if they're willing to pick weird things in the playoffs, maybe they have the gumption to perform at an international event at a high level and not have a lot of fear. Um, not playing in Korea might help them. We saw T1 struggle be at MSI because of all the pressure um, and, you know, the fallout from that for T1. So maybe being in North America is going to help these foreign teams, you know, um, feel less pressure and just play the game. So thank you for watching this video. Uh, around me, you might see that there's a playlist or I haven't done it yet, but um, otherwise, if there's no playlist around me, you'll see two videos, probably Gen G and T1, where you can go watch a similar video about those teams. Um, you'll also find later today, my roundup's gonna come out. So subscribe to the channel, become a member if you wanna have my predictions and things like that and extra content. Um, Join the Discord, follow me on Twitter. Thank you for watching, and I hope you come back for more content.